Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Pastor John. If this is your first time, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Like this video, it is always helpful. Now, today we're going to be talking about the Nephilim. We're going to be talking about the sons of God. It's going to be real awesome and real confusing, so let's get into it. So you might be a couple chapters into your Bible reading plan this year. You might have started one in January, and hey, kudos to you. I'm so proud of you. But you may have come across a very interesting passage in the book of Genesis, Genesis 6 to be exact, and it's a confusing one. It's the one that talks about the Nephilim, the sons of God, and women, and a whole bunch of nasty. Now, when you're reading this text, nobody knows the exact meaning of it, so if you get anybody who reads this and you look at their interpretation, they say, with 100% shadow of a doubt, I know exactly what it means, and we should divide the church over this. Don't follow that person because they are crazy. So, as always, when you're interpreting the Bible, the first thing we need to do is get into the actual text. So if you have your Bibles, get those out. Genesis 6, it says this, When man began to multiply on the face of the lands and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives as any as they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards. And the sons of God came into the daughters of man, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. So as I said, a whole bunch of hanky-panky and nasty-wasty happening in this text. And it's confusing. And so the first question that we have to ask is, who are the sons of of God in this passage. They seem to be these uh, these beings, these angelic beings, when you read it. Now, if you look at the scripture, whenever you're reading the Bible, you want to make sure that the scripture is interpreting the scripture. And if you look at that exact phrase, sons of God, all throughout the Old Testament, it only occurs, I think, five times, maybe six times, and it always is referring to angelic beings. So to me, when you're reading the Bible, I think that, especially this passage, like that's the, the, the most obvious interpretation, it's the one that's just kind of put out there on a silver plate for you. And so I think that's the one that you should go with. Another one, another interpretation of this, of who the sons of God are, some people think that it's the sons of Seth, right? You have Adam loved God. Even after the fall, Adam loved God and walked with God. Um, and he had Seth, who was his son. And so therefore, the sons of God would be the ones from Seth, Seth's line, right? Because Cain was not a good dude, right? Don't kill your brother. You're probably a bad dude if you do that. But Seth loved God, and so his offspring. Another one is that these are kings, these these renowned guys. And actually, I think that when it talks about the Nephilim, the, the people of renown, I think that that's who it's talking about. But when you're asking specifically who were the sons of God, I think the easiest interpretation is that they were angelic beings that, that saw women and enjoyed what they saw. I don't want to think about that. So the reality of this text, it's not about the Nephilim. It's not about the sons of God. What it is about is about the absolute disgusting rejection of God and the perversion of sexuality. You see, this text, I, I don't think it's about who the Nephilim were. I don't think this text is about who these angelic beings were. I think this text is expressing how just awfully dark things got, right? This is right before God floods the earth and you see these angelic beings pervert the way that God had intended them to live and, and then these these women pervert the way that they were intended to live and it's just this absolute rebellion against anything that is good and anything that is godly. And so when we read this text, we need to make sure that we are actually looking for the intent of the author. And I think when Moses wrote this, he was saying, man, things were bad. Things were awful. Things were dark. There was sin everywhere, both from these angelic hosts that were cast out of heaven and from mankind all around. And so we get a picture. Now, you, you got to ask this question. When you read the flood, when you read about Noah and the flood, like you, you should be shocked at this, but this gives us a picture into just how dark things were, right? Like the whole Noah and felt boards with kids is, is just absolutely mind-blowing. I have two young kids, and anytime we read the story of Noah and the ark, like they're so fascinated with the animals, and I'm like, you guys don't get what's going on. This is crazy how dark things were, and God saw it fit and right and good to wipe all of that clean. If anything, we should be shocked that there was even a remnant left. So back to the point of the video. The Nephilim, I believe, were the children of these angels and these women 
woman that made Whoopi and had some big old kids. But I want to warn you something with this. I, I want to warn you not to get too caught up in all of this stuff. Now, again, there are some Christians that get so bent out of shape on these things and, and they, they just obsess over these kind of things that are secret knowledge and, and they want so badly to know the, the secret and the mystery in the scripture. But I say there are times where it's okay to let the mystery of the Bible just be the mystery of the Bible. You don't need to get caught up in all of those things. You can just let them be and, and kind of form your opinion, but not obsess over it. In fact, Paul, when he, he's writing to Timothy, he warns of people doing this. He says in 1 Timothy 4, 7, he says, have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. I know how tempting it can be to get caught up in these things, but you got to ask yourself the question. I mean, make your interpretation, but then ask yourself the question, am I loving my neighbor? Do I have affection for the Lord? Am I reading my Bible? Am I praying? And, and if those things aren't there, man, f throw this out. You know, don't, don't even give this time until you start doing those things because the answer is not there. We don't know. Everybody's interpretation of this text is different. So don't get all bent out of shape and caught up with it. Let the mystery of the Bible be the mystery of the Bible. So train yourselves for godliness. And the secret is my interpretation's right and everybody else's is wrong. So guys, thank you for watching this video. I hope you had a great time. Consider subscribing. Consider liking. It does always help. Check out some more of my videos. Share it. Do whatever you want, guys. It's your life. You live it. You live your best life now. And speaking of that, I have a video called How to Live Your Best Life. Guys, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.